Hi there, you're watching our lesson on fraction operations. Uh, by the time you're done with this lesson, you'll be able to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. Uh, they're both pure fractions and fractions in mixed number form. So let's get started. Okay, I want you to take a look at the two fractions that are on your screen, and I want to ask you a question about those. Um, the fraction on the left, two-fifths, Suppose that those were two slices of pizza on a pan. My question for you is, if you could take these two slices and slip them over into this empty slot on the pan on the right, where you've got one empty slot out of three, one of three things has to happen there. Either those two slices would fit into that spot perfectly, or they'd fit in there with a little bit of room to spare, or these two slices uh, wouldn't quite fit in this empty spot. And so my question is, uh, which one is it? Would they fit perfectly? fit with room to spare, or wouldn't fit at all because they're a little bit too big? Well, it's hard to tell, isn't it? I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit tricky because the slices on the left are fifths, uh, but the slices on the right are thirds. They're different denominations. They're different uh, denominators, five and three. We would be more easily able to tell how those pieces can be combined if we had the same denominator. So when we add fractions, we always like to do that using a common denominator. So let's do that now. So we want to add these fractions, two-fifths and two-thirds. The first thing we need to do is find the common denominator. And you can watch the lesson on common fractions for um, methods for finding the common denominator. But the smallest number that 5 and 3 are going to both go into uh, is going to be 15. And so we want to take 2 fifths plus 2 thirds. But we want to rewrite them uh, as fractions whose denominator is 15. So let's start with our first fraction. We can change that denominator of 5 to a 15 if we multiply the bottom by 3, and we have to do the same thing on the top. That means that that left fraction on the left is really the same as 6 fifteenths. And you can see that if we take each one of these pieces and break those large pieces into thirds. That is to say, we multiply everything by 3, and you can see that instead of being 2 fifths, That's the same as 6 fifteenths. Now we'll do the same thing to the fraction on the right. 2 thirds, we would multiply the top by 5 and the bottom by 5, and that becomes 10 fifteenths. And here again, we can do that visually by multiplying each one of these slices by 5, where there was one big slice, there's now five small slices. And now you can see that this fraction is actually the same as 10 fifteenths. Now it's uh, easy to answer our original question. And in fact, there's six small slices that are 15 over here, but there's only five open slots here. Those pieces will not fit into the space. And if you perform the uh, addition here, we now have six plus 10, we have 16 slices, but it only takes 15 to make a whole. So 16 15 is our answer. Now that's improper. We don't like fractions like that. 15 fits into 16 one time with one slice left over. And so five of those pieces would fit into that spot, but we'd have one 15th left over. The total there is one and one 15th. Let's take a look at another example where we have mixed numbers. 9 and 3 fourths plus 5 and a half plus 3 and 5 eighths. Now we need to find a common denominator here. That's our first step. And the smallest number that all those denominators will go into 4, 2, and 8, they'll all go into 8. And so our common denominator is going to be 8. Note that we do not want to change these fractions into improper. Those would lead to some pretty big improper fractions, and uh, it's going to be a lot more trouble than it's worth. Instead, we just change the fractional part to have a denominator of 8. That becomes 9 and, multiply the top by 2 and the bottom by 2, 6 eighths plus five and a half, that's five and, multiply the top by four and the bottom by four, four eighths plus three and, here we don't need to change our fraction, it's already got a denominator of eight. So nine and six eighths, five and four eighths, three and five eighths, we add those together. First we'll add our whole number part, nine plus five is 14, 15, 16, 17, six eighths plus four eighths is 10 eighths, plus 5 more makes 15 eighths. 
Now that is our total, but the fractional part of that value is improper, so let's change that. 15 eighths on its own is equal to 1 and 7 eighths. And so we'll take that 1, combine it with the 17 that are already there, and we would call this 18 and 7 eighths. Well, here's an extreme example. Um, somebody stacked up uh, a bunch of spacers to push that wheel way outside of its wheel well. Um, I'm sure going to hope that this is just for the opportunity to take a picture because that would definitely be unsafe on the road. Um, but uh, here's what we've got. We've got two three-quarter inch spacers in there, a one and one eighth inch spacer, a half inch spacer, and a one and five sixteenths inch spacer. So the question is, what is the total? Um, let's add those up to find out. So we have two three-quarter inch spacers. We're going to have three-fourths plus three-fourths, a one and one-eighth inch spacer, a half-inch spacer, and a one and five-sixteenths inch spacer. Okay, let's find that total. Uh, you know the first question, right? And that is, what is our common denominator here? Our lowest common denominator is going to be 16. And so we're going to change all these into sixteenths. Uh, I won't write these in at this point. We'd multiply top and bottom by 4, and our first spacer would become 12 sixteenths. Same is true with our other 3 quarter inch spacer. That becomes 12 sixteenths. 1 and 1 eighth, we'd leave the 1. Multiply top and bottom by 2 to get 2 sixteenths. Half is going to be 8 sixteenths. And 1 and 5 sixteenths doesn't need to change at all. Now we can add those up. For whole numbers, we have 1 and 1. That makes 2. And then counting our sixteenths, we have 12 and 12 is 24. 25, 26, plus 8 more makes 34, plus 5 makes 39. 2 and 39 sixteenths. Now that is definitely improper, and so let's note here that the fractional part, 39 sixteenths, uh, 16 fits into 39 two times with 7 left over, so that's 2 and 7 sixteenths. Add those two to the two that were already in front, and that's 4 and 7 sixteenths. And those are inches. Okay, I'd like uh, you to take just a minute and practice that skill. I've given you three fractions here. I'd like you to find the common denominator and add these together, and you can unpause the video when you're ready to see if your solution is correct. Okay, let's work through this. So our denominators are 5, 8, and 2. Uh, the common denominator here, the smallest number that 5, 8, and 2 will go into, well, again, if you're stuck, we can take our biggest denominator, which is 8, and start going through multiples till we find one that 5 and 2 go into. So 5 doesn't go into 8, it doesn't go into 16, or 24, or 32, but our next multiple of 8, which is 40, 5 does go into, and so does 2. So 40 is our common denominator. So let's rewrite these. This becomes 4 and some number of 40ths. Multiply the bottom by 8, the top as well, that's 8 fortieths. 6 and 7 eighths, multiply the bottom by 5 would give us 40, and the top becomes 35. 2 and a half, multiply the bottom by 20, and the top by 20. 2 and 20 fortieths. Now we're ready to add these together. 4 and 6 is 10, plus 2 is 11, 12 for our whole number in front. 8 plus 35 is 43, 53, 63 fortieths. But as is often the case, we end up with an improper fractional part. That is 1 and 23 fortieths. So we'll combine that 1 with the 12 that are already there and call this 13 and 23 fortieths. And that is your total. If you didn't get that, uh, I'd recommend that you go back and watch that process again and see if you can find your error. And if you still can't get it, uh, reach out to me and um, I can work with you to give you some more practice. Okay, subtraction is very similar. Um, 
We still need a common denominator in order to perform any kind of subtraction, so let's take a look at a couple of uh, quick examples here. 5 and 3 quarters minus 2 and 1 sixth, your common denominator there is going to be 12. So let's rewrite these with a denominator of 12. 5 and 3 fourths, that becomes 5 and 9 twelfths. 2 and 1 sixth, that becomes 2 and 2 twelfths. And we can now perform the subtraction. Again, we don't want to make these improper because the numbers get much uh, bigger than they need to, and sometimes they're too difficult to do um, mentally. Uh, here, we just leave them as mixed numbers, leave the 5 in front and the 2 in front. 5 minus 2, that leaves us with 3. And 9 and 9 twelfths minus 2 twelfths is 7 twelfths. And we're done. But there's a little problem that can happen with subtraction that doesn't happen with addition. Let's take a look at this next one and we'll see what this problem is. 9 and 6, what's your common denominator there? Going to be 18. So our first fraction becomes 4 and times 2 is 18 times 2 is 4. 4 eighteenths minus 1 and times 3 times 3, 15 eighteenths. Okay, now um, we could take 4 minus 1, but the problem is we can't take 4 and subtract 15. We don't have enough pieces in our numerator here to subtract off 15. This is a very, very common mistake. What you can't do is just reverse that and take 15 minus 4. I see that error a lot. We need to get more pieces right here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to borrow. We're going to say, all right. I want to give away 15 pieces, but I've only got four pieces. I need more pieces. We take one of our holes and we break it up so that we now only have three holes. And then that gains us whatever our denominator is. That's how many pieces are in a hole. That gains us 18 pieces. So that first fraction is now 3 and 4 plus 18, 22 eighteenths minus 1 and 15 eighteenths. Now we have enough pieces to perform our subtraction. 3 minus 1 is 2, and 22 minus 15, that's the subtraction we couldn't do up here. 22 is big enough to subtract 15, 7 eighteenths. And there we go. Now before I give you a practice problem uh, with subtraction, I want to warn you against another really, really common mistake. So uh, look at how similar these two examples are. 8 and 13 sixteenths minus 4 compared to 8 minus 4 and 13 sixteenths. These look really similar, but uh, let's take a look at each one and I want to make sure that you see the difference. 8 and 13 sixteenths minus 4. Um, 4 doesn't have any fraction on it at all, so if you wanted to, you can say that that's the same as 4 and 0 sixteenths. There is no fraction. And if that's the case, this becomes an easy problem. We can take 13 pieces minus 0 pieces. If we do that, uh, we'll end up with 8 minus 4 in front, that gives us 4, and 13 minus 0, that's just 13, so our answer here is 4 and 13 sixteenths. The key is we had plenty of pieces to subtract the 0, we did not need to borrow. But in this case, we have 8 minus 4 and 13 sixteenths. Now again, that 8 this time doesn't have a fraction on it, so we would say 8 and 0 sixteenths minus 4 and 13 sixteenths. Now we do have a problem, because we can't subtract 13 pieces if we have none to begin with, so we need to borrow. What does that look like? Well, if we lose that 8 and it becomes a 7, this becomes 7 and, how many pieces will we have? Well, we gain our 16 pieces there, so this is 7 and 16 sixteenths. Now that's still 8, right? It's just that one of our holes got broken into pieces to work with. So 7 and 16 sixteenths minus 4 and 13 sixteenths leaves us with 3 and 3 sixteenths. So in the second one, we had to borrow. The first one, we didn't, even though those problems were very similar. Um, think carefully about those when you're working through your practice problems today. OK, why don't you give this one a try? Take 19 and 5 twelfths minus 6 and 7 eighths. Unpause the video when you want to see if your solution is correct. 
Okay, what's our common denominator here? Um, well, we're going to take our larger denominator, which is 12, and start going through multiples till we find one that 8 goes into. 8 doesn't go into 12. The next multiple of 12 is 24. 8 does go into 24, so that's our common denominator. That means this fraction becomes 19 and multiply top and bottom by 2 to become 10 24ths minus 6 and here we'll multiply top and bottom by 3 to become 21 24ths. There, we've got these fractions written with a common denominator. But the problem is, is that uh, we only have 10 pieces to subtract and we need to give away 21. We need to borrow here. We need more pieces in our first numerator. So we're going to borrow, make this an 18, and that gains us 24 pieces. And so this becomes 18, 10 plus 24. We now have 34 24, so that's improper, but that's okay. That's what we need to subtract. Minus 6 and 21 24. 18 minus 6 leaves us with 12 out in front. 34 minus 21 is 13, and those were 24. And so 12 and 13 24 is what you should get. Go ahead and rewatch that if you did not get that solution and see if you can find your mistake. Okay, let's move on uh, and multiply fractions now. Um, I used to have a dog that used to love pizza, uh, and um, he would steal any slice that wasn't protected. So that sets up a math problem, a pretty simple one that I want you to think about here. Suppose you had a pan of four slices with just one missing on a pan, and your dog jumps up and steals half of those pieces. Now the math that you're doing here is you want to find out how much is left. What is half of the four-fifths that was there? In other words, you would multiply half times four-fifths to find out how much is left. You already know that if you have four out of five slices on your pan and the dog eats half, you know that you have to end up with an answer of two-fifths. Only two of those five slices will remain. So how do you get that answer? Well, there's two ways that you can do this multiplication. One way is to do this. We can take half times four-fifths, and we don't need a common denominator to multiply. We can just multiply straight across. If we multiply one times four, we get four in the numerator. Two times five is 10 in the denominator, but four-tenths reduces to give us our answer of two-fifths. In other words, if the dog eats half, then two of those five pieces will remain, and that's our answer, two-fifths. But there's a slightly better way. We can take one-half times four-fifths, as we just did. But before we multiply across, we always look diagonally and see if there's any reducing we can do diagonally. One and five, those two numbers don't reduce, but four and two do. What we're going to do is we're going to cancel common factors. That is to say, cancel some number that's in both of these. It's exactly the same as the reducing that we were doing just a little while ago. So we can divide 2 by 2 and that becomes a 1. Divide 4 by 2 and it becomes a 2. Now multiply across. 1 times 2 in the numerator is 2, and 1 times 5 in the denominator is 5, and there's our answer. Instead of having to reduce later, we did our canceling before, and that keeps the numbers smaller to work with. Let's look at a couple more examples. We're going to look at some examples where we have mixed numbers, and the key is anytime we have mixed numbers, we have to make sure that they are uh, turned into improper fractions before we can multiply. We cannot have numbers sitting out in front here when we want to multiply. Here's what that looks like. Two problems here. The first one, what is the total thickness of six 3 8 inch thick spacers? So all we want to do is take six times 3 8 okay? Now that six is a whole number. We have to make that into an improper fraction. We have to call it 6 over 1 times 3 over 8. Now we could multiply straight across, but let's look for any reducing or canceling of common factors. 3 and 1, there's no common factor. 6 and 8 do have a common factor of 2. So we'll cancel that 6 and make it a 3. After dividing by 2, we divide the 8 by 2 and it becomes a 4. Now we multiply across, that's now a 3 times 3, which is 9. 1 times 4 is 4, we get 9 fourths. That's improper. 
it's 2 and a fourth when we turn it into a mixed number. The total thickness would be 2 and a quarter inches. Okay, 3 fourths times 2 and a third times 1 and 3 fifths. Let's see what we can do there. 3 fourths is no problem. 2 and a third, we have to make that improper. That becomes 7 over 3 in our multiplication. And 1 and 3 fifths, that needs to be made improper. That becomes 8 fifths in our multiplication. So now we look for any canceling. We can cancel anywhere we want as long as we divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number. So 3 and 3, those both divide by 3. Divide by 3 is 1. Divide by 3 is 1. 4 and 8, even though they're not next to each other, 1 is above, 1 is below, so we can cancel those. Those both divide by 4. Divide by 4 is 1. Divide by 4 is 2. Now we're ready to multiply across. In the numerators, we have 1 times 7 times 2. That's 14. And 1 times 1 times 5 is 5. That's improper, but it's equivalent to 2 and 4 fifths, which is our result. And just like that, you can multiply fractions. The key is you don't need a common denominator to multiply, but we do have to make these fractions improper. Okay, here's one for you to do. Go ahead and um, take out some scratch paper. If you don't already have it out, work this problem and unpause when you're ready to see the solution here. Okay, 5 and a third times 7 eighths times 1 and 2 seven. We have to make these into improper fractions. 5 and a third, that's 15. 16 over 3 times 7 eighths is already what we call a pure fraction. There is no number in front to worry about, so pure fractions are always um, less than 1. So we multiply that by 7 eighths times 1 and 2 sevenths. That's a mixed number. We need to make that improper. 7, 8, 9 sevenths. Okay, so there's our first step. Now let's look for any canceling of common factors. The sevens both divide by 7, become 1 and 1. 16 and 8, those both divide by 8. Divide by 8 is 2, divide by 8 is 1. Be careful, this is almost always where the mistakes are made in canceling. Um, you've got a lot of numbers rolling around in your head. Be real careful about how you cancel common factors um, or reduce diagonally. Okay, and 3 and 9 also reduce, and so uh, we can cancel that 3, divide it by 1, uh, excuse me, divide by 3 is 1, and divide by 3 is 3. So now we have 2 times 1 times 3, that's a numerator of 6, and 1 times 1 times 1, our denominator is 1, but what's 6 over 1 equal to? Well, that's just 6. The product of those three fractions turns out to be a whole number with no fraction at all. Okay, I'm going to ask you a, an easy question here uh, to make division make a little bit more sense. You probably have learned a rule that you were told and might not understand why you're doing it. Here's my question. If you've got a cooling system in a car that holds 14 quarts of coolant, and you know that it should be mixed 50-50 with water, then my question is, how much actual antifreeze will you need in the system? You don't need to fill all 14 quarts with antifreeze, right? It would only be half of that. So hopefully uh, you can recognize that if it's a 14 quart system, you're going to need only 7 quarts of water. So here's how you can answer that. That's an easy question, but your brain will actually think about that in one of two ways, and they're actually the same way. One way to think about that, um, of course, is just to take 14 quarts and divide it by 2, right? And that, of course, is going to give you 7 quarts. Another way to think about that is to say that you have 14 quarts and you're going to multiply it by one half. That also gives you 7 quarts. So these are actually the same thing. What I want you to recognize here is in both cases we started out with 14 quarts. Okay, We started out with the same number in both cases. But then multiplying by one half was the same as dividing by two, which is really the same as dividing by two over one. This is the, this is the part that we want to make a note of. 
dividing by one number is the same as multiplying by that fraction flipped over. Uh, those are called reciprocals. And so we never actually do division of a fraction. We always take this kind of problem and we flip it over and we multiply. That gives us the same result. First number doesn't change, but we change division to multiplication by the reciprocal. And then we don't really need to learn division. We can just apply the multiplication principles that we've already used. So let's do a real simple example here. 7 eighths divided by 3 fourths. Now 3 fourths fits into 7 eighths um, just barely. So we should get an answer a little bit over 1. 7 eighths divided by 3 fourths. These are pure fractions. There's no mixed numbers to convert. So we're going to change this to 7 eighths times, take the reciprocal, 4 thirds. Okay, so we multiply by the reciprocal of the second number. Now, after we flipped it, now we do our normal multiplication stuff. Is there any canceling of common factors? There is here. Uh, 8 divides by 4 to become 2. 4 divides by 4 to become 1. 7 times 1 is 7. 2 times 3 is 6. So this is 7 sixth, but that's improper. Our answer is 1 and 1 sixth. Here's the question. We've got a sheet of steel that's uh, square, 17 and a half inches wide. And my question is, if we cut that into strips that are all two and a quarter inches wide, how many strips can we cut out of that steel plate? Really what we want to do here is we're going to take 17 and a half inches and we want to divide it into strips that are two and one fourth. So let's take 17 and a half divided by two and a fourth. First of all, we need to make these improper. 17 times 2 is 34. That's 35 over 2. Divided by 2 and a fourth. Let's make that improper. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9 fourths. Okay, so that's the same problem, but we've made them improper. Now we're going to change this to a multiplication problem. And this becomes 35 over 2. The first number doesn't change, but we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of 9 over 4. That's 4 over 9. Okay, now rather than multiply across, we look for any diagonal canceling. 35 and 9, there is no common factor there. But 4 and 2 have a common factor of 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And now we can multiply across. 35 times 2 is 70 over 1 times 9 is 9. 70 over 9, that's improper. 9 fits into 70 7 times. 7 times 9 is 63. And we have 7 left over. So 7 with the remainder of 7, which means that this is 7 and 7 ninths. So let's interpret that result. What does that actually mean? It means we could get seven whole strips. And we could have seven ninths of another strip. So most of another one, but not a quite an eighth whole strip. So why don't you go ahead and uh, do this example. Unpause the video when you're ready to see the solution. Okay, seven and four-fifths divided by one and three-tenths. Um, first of all, we'll take seven and four-fifths and make that improper. That's 39 over 5 divided by 13 over 10. We made them improper. Now let's change it to a multiplication problem. We're going to take 39 over 5, but we're going to multiply by 10 over 13. Now we look for can uh, canceling of common factors. 5 and 10 both divide by 5. Divided by 5 is 1. Divided by 5 is 2 up there. And 39 and 13 actually have a common factor of 13. 39 divided by 13 is 3. 13 divided by 13 is 1. So when we multiply across, we get 3 times 2, which is 6 over 1. That turns out to be 6 on the nose. Hopefully that's what you got. but. Uh, Watch that one more time if you didn't get that result. Okay, that wraps up this unit. When we add and subtract, we know that we have to share a common denominator. 
that makes the pieces the same size so that they can be added and subtracted. When we multiply, we don't need a common denominator, but we do have to make any mixed numbers into improper fractions before we multiply. And we saw that when you want to divide one fraction by another, we just multiply the first fraction by the reciprocal of the second. There, we've got a pretty good handle on fractions at this point. You know how to change the forms, add, subtract, multiply, and divide them. That'll uh, provide us everything that we need for this course. So go ahead and do the practice problems, and as always, reach out to me through a text or an email if you have uh, questions, and we'll certainly work through it to get you the practice that you need so you can master these topics. We'll see you in the next lesson.